Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create an animated section cut using Grasshopper and V-Ray. In this video we're going to be using this simple model here and setting up a V-Ray clipping plane that's going to move from left to right animating and cutting through our model. Now to do this we're going to start by opening up Grasshopper just by typing in Grasshopper in our Rhino window. You can see in this scene I've already set up a simple V-Ray render. To do this we're using the V-Ray tab here and we're using the main V-Ray render component which is this one here which inputs all our information for our geometry, our camera and our lighting. Now it takes a little bit of time to set up if you haven't done this before so I would recommend watching my previous video on how to set up a render in V-Ray within Grasshopper specifically before you watch this video just to look at how you can use this component to set up a base render. Once you've plugged in your V-Ray geometry, which is this geometry here, you've got a camera and you've set up your initial kind of render settings, it should look something like this, where we can click on the interactive render and we're going to get a simple model. I'm just using a white material for this particular model, as you can see here, controlled by this material slot that goes into the V-Ray geometry that is then connected into my render scene. And for this, we're just going to keep the model white for now, just so we can see where our section line is cutting. Now, in order to create a clipping plane that's going to cut through this model, we're going to be using the V-Ray Clipper, which we're going to find directly in Grasshopper. You can find this on the V-Ray tab, just under the V-Ray Clipper option. And we're just going to click and drag this on to our board here. Now, in the V-Ray Clipper, you'll see we have different functions here which control this clipper and its geometry and where it will be in its material as well. In order to see some of these I'm just going to start by right clicking and showing the controls here just so we can see some of these controls and what they do. Most of these we're not going to need to change but the main one we want to look at is this little geo tab which represents the geometry of the clipping plane which we can position anywhere we want in our scene to cut through our object. Now first, before we use this, I'm going to create a piece of geometry in my Rhino file just by going back to my main file here and we're going to do that using the box tab here and we're just going to make a large box that's bigger than our piece of geometry like so and just sits next to this and we're going to just scroll it down slightly just so it's below and it's wider than our geometry as you can see here. This is essentially going to be my clipping plane and as I move it through the geometry it's going to essentially hide any bits of geometry that are contained within that box and we'll put it on ghosted just so we can see it there. Now in order to use this we're going to go back to Grasshopper in here and in order to plug it into this geometry tab I'm going to go to the parameters option we're going to load in a breadth file here so we can see just found under this little icon here in parameters we're going to select our box right click on that parameter and set one brep to set that cube under this parameter and then we're going to plug it into the geometry tab now with this Vero geometry here we're then going to merge it with our geometry of our scene because currently if i just hit on this interactive render panel here we're just going to see our model because at the moment if I just minimize this down we're just going to hide this panel so we can see this a little bit larger here all we're using is this geometry here which is being plugged in to our source now I have this merge panel here this can be found just by double clicking and typing in merge and we can use that to essentially take our geometry we're going to plug that in as you can see here and then also take our clipper geometry and plug that in as well that means we'll merge this clipper geometry with our geometry of our scene and render both of them together and we can use these merge functions to essentially pull lots of geometry together and render it all at once now at the moment you can see nothing's clipping the reason for that is this cube actually isn't intersecting with this geometry at all but if I push it over slightly, you'll see here that it then starts to cut that geometry. As we move it through, it will cut it in different places. Now for now, I'm just going to move it here because I'm going to set up a new way for Grasshopper to actually control that geometry and clip it specifically as it moves along that kind of geometry parameter. So what we'll do first is in order to kind of move that geometry, we want to set up a way to change its location 
based upon a number parameter. Now we're going to pause our render for the time being, just close that, and we're going to go back to where our geometry is held here. Now in order to move this we can double click to locate a new node and we're going to type in move and we're going to find the move node. This essentially just can move bits of geometry to any place in our scene and we're going to plug that into the G for geometry tab and we're going to plug the output back in here. You can see this little green box here represents how much it's moving and it has an initial transformation of 10 in the Z direction as you can kind of see here. Now I don't want to use it, I actually want to move it in the Y direction and we also want to move it in the negative Y direction because we're going to want to move it this way across the scene. To do that we're going to use a vector to control this and we're going to use this construct point in here and plug it into that transform. Now currently each of these values is zero but if we want to add a Y coordinate there we can go back to the parameters. I'm going to use a number slider to control it and for this slider I'm just going to right click, edit the settings and we're going to make the maximum value 100 here, we're going to make the minimum value minus 100 like so and we'll just put it on a number rounding so it goes up in increments of 1 as you can see there. Once we've got that we're going to plug that into the Y value there and as you can see I'm now moving this left and right to control its position. Now we've got that plugged into our clipper as well, what will happen is if we go back, go back to our render and then find that slider which is located up here, I can then move that slider, what it's doing is it's essentially chopping my model based upon that location. So now we've got it working, we've got a slider that's controlling our clipping plane and we can move it back and forward to chop our model. For the last step of this tutorial we're then going to animate this process because currently I need to manually tweak this slider in order to get it moving. Now to animate this using Grasshopper and V-Ray we can click back on the V-Ray tab and we can load in the timeline setting which is just found under this little clock option under V-Ray. We're just going to click and drag this out into our scene. The way the timeline works is we have a value of frames which we can set here and when we render out, the render engine will render each frame sequentially from zero to whatever we set it to be. And we'll save those out as a series of image files. Now we can set the number of frames we want and also the start frame just under these panels here. So let's say for this example, I want 100 frames. I'm just going to go to my parameters. We're just going to create this input panel here and we're just going to type in 100 like so. We'll make that a bit smaller. Plug that in. And there you see my frames go from 0 to 99. We've got 100 frames there. Now in here we want to make sure that our timeline option is connected into the timeline of our render here. So we're just going to click and drag and connect that in like so. And what that means is if I render out the animation it will render out each of these frames in turn. Now what we can also do is we can use this frame or this fraction output to essentially control our movement coordinate here. So at the moment we've got this slider that moves from left to right, but what I can do is I can also use these outputs here which will change depending on the frame to control this parameter. Now to do this what I'm going to do is we're going to set our Y coordinate to be fully covering our object like so. So you see we've moved it minus 80 so it fully covers and hides our object. So the object is fully clipped now. What we can then do is if we go to the maths parameter, I'm going to take this multiplication option, we're going to take that value there and we're going to times it by this fraction here. Now the way this fraction works is once it gets to 99 frames it will equal 1 and anywhere in between will be a fraction of that value. So if it's 46 it's 0.46 on there. So we can essentially take that, we can multiply it by the maximum distance we're moving this cube and then we're going to input that back into the Y value. What this will mean is it will essentially control that distance incrementally through the frames. So in frame 0 it will move this 0 because our kind of value of our fraction is 0 and that's multiplying by the distance and as we go up we're getting kind of incrementally closer to a value of 1 in our fraction which is multiplying by minus 80 to give us its final position. So we're essentially changing 
the movement of this clipper based upon the frame we're on, as you can see here. And that essentially animates our scene for us. So if we just quickly pick up that preview again, we're going to go back into here. And we're just going to take our timeline and we're just going to scroll through. You can see it's slowly chopping through the model as it moves through the frame, which will essentially create our animation. Now, as a last step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of my section cut. At the moment, it's just white. It's using the object's material. And we can see that if we click on the clipper object here, we've got this true tab linked to that object material. If I double click it, it's not going to use that material anymore. And it's going to look in this little parameter here for a new material to add. Now we can add a new one in by going to V-Ray. We're going to make a simple material like so. I'm going to plug it in there and under the diffuse I'm going to select a new color plug that in to the diffuse there and then we're going to make it a nice new color here so let's select a nice hue maybe we'll go for a blue lower that saturation down maybe make it a little bit darker like so And that's going to be our section color there. And you can see as I scroll through the frames again, that will change depending on where we are in the model. Like so. So now all we need to do, now we've set this all up, is render out our animation. To do that, I'm going to go to my render tab in Grasshopper. We're going to first make sure that my image output is set. So I'm going to double click on the output. I'm going to select a folder for this. I'm going to save this as a PNG. I'm just going to call this 01, like so. You might want to change the name as well. Maybe you call it kind of Clipper. So we can set that up there, like so. And you also might want to change the output. For now, my output resolution is 1000 by 1000, which is fine for now. If you want your image to render out quicker, we can change the quality. Mine's on low at the moment, but the higher you do it, the longer it will take to render. So bear that in mind when you're doing an animation, it might take a long time if you've got a very high quality setting on. Once you're happy with those settings, all we need to do is right click on the render tab and click render animation. And what that will do is it will begin with frame zero and it will slowly start to render out each frame in sequence as that clipper moves through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video here, we're going to render out the frames and then we're going to look at the resulting animation. Now that the render's finished we can look in our folders and here you can see all of those files showing that kind of clipper moving through the object and if we pull this together into an animation we can create an animation of our clipping plane moving through creating an animated section of our model. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how you can create an animated section using Grasshopper and V-Ray in Rhino. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on rendering, modeling in V-Ray and Rhino and Grasshopper, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.